Well, thank you everyone for joining us tonight for Authors in Conversation, Blood on the Fog by Tongo Eisen Martin in conversation with Sonia Sanchez. My name is Nia McAllister and I'm the Public Programs Manager at the Museum of the African Diaspora. As we gather here today, I want to acknowledge that Moat affirms that Black Lives Matter and recognizes and condemns the ongoing systemic violence against Black people. We honor and mourn the senseless murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmed Aubrey, Tony McDade, Casey Goodson Jr., Patrick Warren Sr., Andre Hill, Dante Wright, Anthony Thompson Jr., Micaiah Bryant, and so many others who've lost their lives in police brutality and racial injustice including those whose names we do not know. Moad's commitment to racial justice is ongoing, and as such, we continue to say these names to hold space and to honor these victims. I also want to acknowledge the spaces that we're occupying. Though we're gathered here virtually, we recognize that all non-Native people to this land are descendant from settler occupiers or descendants of those forcibly brought to this continent. Moad occupies the unceded land of the Ramatesh Ohlone people, and we pay our respects to the Ohlone people and their elders, both past and present, who have stewarded this land throughout the generations. We, enc we encourage everyone to learn more about the native lands that you occupy by visiting nativeland.ca. It is truly an honor to be introducing our esteemed guests for e this evening's program. To be in a virtual room with these two great minds and two of my personal favorite poets is a very special opportunity. I want to begin by congratulating Tongo Eisen Martin on the publication of his latest book, Blood on the Fog, which was published today by City Lights Books. We are in such good company celebrating this occasion. I would like to thank City Lights Books for co-presenting this program with Moad. And I am also grateful to the Mosaic community of BIPOC booksellers who have helped amplify this event. And finally, thank you to California Humanities and the National Endowment for the Humanities for financially supporting this program. And with that, I would like to introduce our two guests. Originally from San Francisco, Tongo Eisen Martin is a poet, movement worker, and educator. His latest curriculum on extrajudicial killing of Black people we Charge Genocide Again has been used as an educational and organizing tool throughout the country. His book titled Someone's Dead Already was nominated for a California Book Award. And his book Heaven is All Goodbyes was published by the City Lights Pocket Poet Series and was shortlisted for the Griffin's Poetry Prize and won a California Book Award and an American Book Award. His latest book, Blood on the Fog, is also being released in the City Lights Pocket Poet Series. In 2020, he co-founded Black Trader Press, and he is currently San Francisco's eighth poet laureate. Sonia Sanchez is an award-winning poet, activist, scholar, and formerly the Laura Carnell Professor of English and Women's Studies at Temple University. She's the author of over 20 books, including Like the Singing Coming Off the Drums, Does Your House Have Lions, Wounded in the House of a Friend, and Shake Loose My Skin. Sonia Sanchez has lectured at over 500 universities and colleges in the United States and has traveled extensively reading her poetry in Africa, Cuba, England, the Caribbean, Australia, Europe, Nicaragua, the People's Republic of China, Norway, and Canada. In December of 2011, Philadelphia Mayor Michael Nutter selected Sonia Sanchez as Philadelphia's first poet laureate, calling her the longtime conscience of the city. Welcome Tongo Eisen Martin and Sonia Sanchez. Hello. Thank you very much, Nia. And thank, thank you to the uh, Museum of African Diaspora and City Lights for uh, putting, putting this together. And um, much, you know, all the love, uh, all, all, all the love in any lifetime I can get my hands on to Sister Sonia Sanchez for, for joining us. Um, where would you like to where would you, where would you like to go thank you thank you it's so good seeing you again my dear brother and yes, always an honor to hear what you're writing and hear what you're saying and and to know that you're still out there giving us some giving us some magical words okay that's so important thank you thank part you. of a great tradition <laughs> yes ma'am 
So what's uh what 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 has been on your mind lately? Oh my goodness, what's been on my mind? Well, you know, I was um uh in the south and I got caught in a, a tornado. Mm. <laughs> Uh, and uh, what it has done is that it has given me a terrible case of, um, of, 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 of when you, you know you get dizzy, you know, um, mm -hmm. um, it's, and all you can do is just stretch out and not do anything. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been a, a kind of wild um, uh, two years as a consequence. Uh, vertigo is really something I keep telling. It got so bad at some point, I had to name her, you know, so when I woke up in the morning, you know, and that vertigo was there, I would say, good morning, Ms. Vertigo, you know, um, so don't you, I'm going to go out, I'm getting dressed down to go out for my morning walk, um, come on, you know, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to let you open the door, and she looks at me and says, no, 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 I am still here, you know, so I can't get rid of her. Sometimes I say to her, stay up here. You know, uh, in the TV room, whatever, et cetera. You know, and you can hang out and 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 play with the computer. Uh, I'm going downstairs. Please stay upstairs, and she does. But I'm telling you, um, uh, it may it, it got to be so so very uh, interesting that I start writing a book. You know, about my conversation with Ms. Vertigo. <laughs> right at some point, <laughs> I mean, she's so terrible. Uh, I mean, you know, she comes and she looks and she says, "How do you feel, uh, Sister Sonia?" I said, well, I feel fine today. She said, how do you feel now? I said, oh, let me get to a count. So yeah, now I know what uh, people used to talk about when they said that they had vertigo, right? So, but you, know, you come through it and you keep on going and um, that's it, yeah. So yeah, you know, we'll, you know, we'll hang it in. I'm still open the door in the morning asking her to go for a walk with me. And I figured so I can leave her behind someplace in the park. <laughs> <laughs> may we uh, may may we hear a poem? Okay, a poem. All right. Uh, I what I'm doing is that um, I'm reading from the, the the new poems, collected poems, and I thought I would read a poem from. But it can't be from each section, but for a number of the sections, some of the uh, the first. Um, one of the first poems I did for my book, Homecoming, uh, I thought that um, that would be good. Poem at 30. It is midnight, no magical bewitching hour for me. I know only that I am here waiting, remembering that once as a child, I walked two miles in my sleep. Did I know then where I was going, traveling? I am always traveling. I want to tell you about me, about nights on a brown couch when I wrap my bones in lint and refuse to move. No one touches me anymore. Father, do not send me out among strangers. You, you, black man, stretching, scraping the mold from your body. Here is my hand. I am not afraid of the night. Uh, mm. 1968, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, should we have a poem from you? Yes, ma'am. Going from yes. six to eight to, <laughs> you know, to more modern day types. You know, and it's so amazing sometimes how you look back on the poems and you wonder, you know, if indeed they stand up. But very few people, you know, uh, at that time uh, would say, you know, uh, talk about, you know, uh, you know, uh, a black man, <laughs> right? You know, people were called Negroes at that time. Um, and the first time I got up on the stage and said, I am a black woman. People, some people booed in New York. Can you imagine? Oh yeah, they booed. And you know, what you want to do is that you just want to go, oh, whatever. But you come out of, I came out of a Methodist church with my grandmother. And I always remember my grandmother and those women in that church who really ran the church, although no one told them they ran the church. And I stood up tall and said, yeah, that's what I'd be, right, you know? And there we were, you know, in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. That's me. Well, um, societies wander together like hopeful drops of a virus. Citizen testaments bent on offering a nation of 
breadwinners to hold me back. Like it's a Brinks. I wrinkle the concrete sometimes like flesh. My Martin Luther King permanence turned away from a podium into the reeds like God is the dangerous twin. Black August to the mountaintop balcony on my bedroom floor. You know, they steal you from the earth itself and suspend you and your broken neck from their foolish euphoria. From the loyalty oath to their gray superstitions, loyalty oath to their agrarian reform, I returned to my mother completely disrespected. Fulfilling the heat off of purgatory, they kill poets like me. Walk me away from my poems, never to be heard from again. In this final industrial complex of bloodlines picked over, picked through a sport and spiritual death of your devil, at least half made police become a pretty word. I'm reading a lynch mob shoestrings like they were tea leaves, teaching you how to write about cities. It's the 25th century in the mirror, people. Tyranny against your chump change, your chump, to be mocked even with a gun in your car. A cubit of needlework spelled tune for the proletariat, the relapse ministry. Talented people curled up in a fetal position next to a diamond dime, just another service day in the theatrics of tea house fascism and a bouquet of surveillance cameras in the poverty of God. New, new blue eyes, corpses of water, newly potted presidency of one big shiny coin if you ask an animated capitalism and other non-literal voice killing his white freedom. The deification of hyphen. Medicine bread and picture shows, great protesters in LA, guests of our ink, drop kicking roses in the graveyard, DC mink like a stone torn in half to pin advances despite CIA guideposts despite non-African past and futures a metaphorical but not surreal day in the horn-ridden life horn player improvising king. Like a radio prize fight featuring Shango himself, a real hand sweeping land of racism. May I return to the ground. May I make progress with the gun. Our mother Emmanuel, they put on music that evening, a swinging type body language for you to drink with five minute five dollar bills for your body language, some applause, my past stomach lining. Neither a good thing nor a bad thing, like being psychic on the way to a lethal injection and to sit you down with Lady Day, Lady Day leading youth who surrendered their souls to Africa too soon. Polity thoughts floating in the cup of water, she saved me, accessing my stomach, accessing the love of the American lynch, coast leaves wooden avalanching to the wrist. Our mother Emmanuel, avalanching to the sharp keys, pain, the deal you make with pain. The piano makes sense to them. You know, laying hands on the world gradually. Addressing the bend and necks on the streets of the North Traveler, sailing in pain, repeating pain in the North, 10 trigger fingers on that piano. If Harmony would have me putting a hundred fights on every direction off of the Lady Day, leaning on trees again, recruiting the countryside itself, saying, lay your plan out on this lightning. Make your poems the corner pocket of men. I've greeted the blues itself. America may clean my dead body, but will never include me. There goes the poet, killing without killing. Never mind this painting of your language. May I be a meaningful lynching. A crow's passing. Good and dead by the afternoon. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I you know if, if we were in a big auditorium, I would be going. <laughs> 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 we did that. We said that. But so, um, yeah. do you remember what year you wrote that poem? I, I wrote that at uh, 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 this this past winter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, feeling uh, you know, f feeling the feeling the weight mm -hmm. of what seems to be, you know, a kind of imperialist victory uh, uh, of late or around. I almost feel like they 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 want. Forgive me for being the pessimistic one this evening. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But 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 uh, there there yeah, there's a there's 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 been a lot of pain. Uh, 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 recently, um, and so you know, I, I think that that poem is is just a, a a sketch of not even the half. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, my brother, when you live as long as I've lived, you know, we're going to have, uh, you know, uh, we're going to have um, uh, certainly uh, victories. But you know, you're living. We're living. In, in, a, in a country where, you know, at some point after the victories, uh, give the country about five years and they'll turn the victories into a failure, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and it's always about money, if you understand truly what I'm saying, but you just, you always just say, uh-huh, yeah, we're, and go back, what, what do we do? What did we do and what didn't we do? And what should we have done? You know what I'm saying? And, and how can we do it better the next time? Because it is always, is it not, you know, about struggle. And sometimes it's about a win. And the point is sometimes it's not about a win. Um, you know, so you get together with some of your people, you know, and, you know, and you hang out, you maybe you take a glass of wine, 
or you do like what I, I know I'm not a drinker, you know, but we were in Cuba one year and uh, I had done a, a long talk and, you know, they gave a, 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 a great res a good response and we ate dinner late because always when you travel, you're always eating dinner late, you know? Um, and there I was, and then, uh, but they poured wine and I said, you know, that's okay. But then we talked for so long before dinner and after dinner, I, 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 I was thirsty and I picked up the wine, I took a sip. And then I announced, well, I guess I'm gonna dance on this table. You know, because we have a victory today. <laughs> and, I, and I said, you know, I'm going. I climbed up on the stool and I got up on the, and I danced a victory dance. You know, always when you think we fail, dance a victory dance. Okay, because always, you know, that victory is coming behind. You got to do it to keep the head, you know, sensitized to, to victory, never to failure. If we understand sometimes that things don't work out right, that people don't work out right. But always behind that is that idea of like what we've been talking about for such a long time. And it takes, you know, as, as someone used to say, it takes a minute sometimes, Sonia. <laughs> and, um, and as I said, it sure, it sure do. It takes a minute, right. But I thank you for that, right, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Should I read something to you? Please. Yeah. Um, I'd like to read, uh, you know, in terms of the, the kind of development when you began to talk to your audience, uh, uh, the black audience, you know, and so I wrote this poem. I don't know what it's from sometimes. Oh, a blues book for blue black magical women. Coming to black geography, you sitting like Manzu's cardinal, come up through tongues, multiply memories and to avoid descent among wounds cruising like shit climbing to these sockets, golden with brine. Because I was born musician to two black race, I cut a blue song for America and you cushioned by middle-class springs saw ghettos that stretched voices into dust, turned corners where people walked on their faces. I sang unbending songs and gathered gods convenient as Christ. I am the frozen face. Here my face marches towards new lifts while spring runs, runs green with ghosts. I am the living mass. Hear my skin warm with adolescent peels like Picasso's flames, and the earth in one fold of permanence stares at the skies. If I had a big piece of dust to ride on, I would gather up my pulse and follow disposable dreams, and all things being equal, they would pass into butterflies and quiver in sprawling yellow. Come, ride my birth, earth mother. Tell me how I have become, became this woman with razor blades between her teeth. Sing me my history, O oh Earth Mother, about tongues multiplying memories, about breasts contained in store. Pull me from the throat of mankind where worms eat, O oh Earth Mother. Come to this black woman, you, rider of earth pilgrimages. Tell me how I have held five bodies in one large cocktail of love and still have the thirst of the beginning sip. Tell me, tell me, Earth Mother, for I want to rediscover me, the secret of me, the river of me, the morning ease of me. I want my body to carry my words like aqueducts. I want to make the world my diary and speak rivers. Rise up, Earth Mother, out of rope strong trees, dancing a windless dance, come phantom mother, Dance me a breakfast of birth. Let your mouth stir me forth so I creep with your mornings. Come, O oh mother, light up my mind with a story right as the sun. Earth mother. <laughs> Old woman's voice bells. Bells, bells, let the bells ring. Bells, 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 ring the bells to announce this yo, earth mother. For the day is turning in my thighs and you are born, black girl, come. I am calling to you this Oh, Earth Mother of the elaborate dreams, come, 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 girl, nearer. <laughs> I can almost see your face now, come closer. Yes, there you are. <laughs> I have stuffed your whole history in my mouth. I, your Earth Mother, was that hungry once for knowledge. Come closer, ah, little black girl, I see you. I can see you coming towards me, little girl, running from seven to 35 in one day. I can see you coming, girl, made of black grace. I can see you coming in the arena of youth, girl, shaking your butt to double Dutch days. I can 
see you coming, girl, racing doors. I can see you coming, girl, made of black rain. I can see you coming. You know, and, you know, it goes on to young black girl, you know, and there's a, a couple other, but I'll stop there. So, mm -hmm. so right. I don't know how long we read, so I just, we'll just say, okay. I got mm -hmm. um, I talk facing away from the dead. Mm -hmm. They replace me with the change in my pocket. The penny that's yet to be invented. They say you have to know how to cut a throat on the way to cutting a throat. <laughs> <laughs> After sleeping on a mattress made from two garbage bags of clothes, I became content with the small gestures of plantation fires. I mean, playing with couch ashes, I realized how weird the universe was. It exists in, in so many places, so many random things that interrupts me while I'm trying to dream. Like your clay correspondence, Lord. To be transparent, I have 20 books next to a bullet like an old man giving advice at the beginning of a revolution. I, I've really done it, Lord. Explored the mumbles of my mind. Explored what's naturally there and I found no brainwashing. I found Africa, Lord. I have a future. It takes place in the diasporic South. I have morning possessions, modern militancy. I mean, windows to the South, I'll walk on a missile for food. I guess you will not want flowers for a few years, Lord. Will I be tied face to face with the country I murdered? Merge with us, Lord. A old metal versus a new metal. A old metal versus a pool of meandering imperialist faces, a multiculturalism of sorts. The dead replace me with a comedian's chest cavity instead of a chest cavity held tight. It takes a violent middle man for me to talk to myself. Stories that travel through other people's stories, a song about a song, a hemisphere about a hemisphere, stories that travel through a conquered poet. Hey, my mother remembers Africa, Lord. She killed on behalf of you, Lord. I wore a machete all winter and no one asked me what it meant. I read 1,000 books in front of the world. What I do is fight poems and sleep through decades in San Francisco prayer circles, watch people play for post-working class associative surfaces or recreations of a governor's desk, ruling class art of utility, playing fine a sociopathic bureaucrat. A day some white people scare even easier tv in a basket next to a ceramic baby wearing ceramic armor musket progeny fantasizing through the art of the poor their trendy latches locked before god black or hunted down like a dog and hand over my friends lord lord i think i'm gonna die in the war unelected white people in my small house like a blue song of no spiritual effect a dollhouse age bomb a pony show near dead bodies apartheid weddings that go right apartheid white people who give birth to mathematicians the spiritual continuity of barracks and police stations a chemical interpretation of a sunday trip to church church smells in their pockets a river mistaken for a talking river no autobiography outside of small personal victories of violence and drug use made in the image of god trinkets a white abolitionist confided in their children about chemical assurances that they will switch from black artists to white artists from black god to white god from black worker to white worker i think about you cautiously lord in the same way i think about my childhood lord foxhole friday nights most of life is mute a comedian points out a planter's field to a priest king sugar cane king cotton king revolutionary to bottle central containing all modes of shallow introduction introducing an unlisted planet class speaking about fevers and balance sheets and reassuring the masses that we could figure out our fathers later a priest took my mother lightly lord Stood in front of parishioners, re fantasies about black art, priest reading confidently before I broke him and broke his parallel. After the day, I've never been a poet before. A little brother watches his big brother's friends. They leave rifles on sheltered walls. They agree with me and call it literature. It's a simple matter, this revolution thing. Mm -hmm. To really lie to no one, to keep nothing godlike, to write a poem for God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know, for, for our audience, you know, talk about the poem. How long did it take you to write that poem? Was that um, one of those things that it just came like, shh, and you sat down and it poured out all over the paper and you were happy and all you had to do is just cross out, you know, excess stuff, whatever. Or was that like many times, you know, like, hey, I'm starting this poem, right? And there it is. And every morning you look at it and you, and then you, and you throw it down and go out wherever you go and you come back and it's still there and you still haven't yeah. done it. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Talk about it so people can understand. You know, as 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 fate as fate would have it, actually, this that 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 poem uh, was written for the uh, written for the Museum of uh, of African Diaspora. I had misunderstood a gig in which I thought I was supposed to just come and say poems, just do a regular set, 
Uh-huh. I didn't I didn't fig I didn't know that it, or it didn't click that it was supposed to be a, a, a new poem based on an exhibit there. And I forget over there who had the presence of mind to hit me the night before, like, oh, looking forward to your new poem tomorrow, right? <laughs> I said, okay, I got you. So luckily the uh the exhibit was also online, uh, or some of it was online. So I put the I put the exhibit up on, on the laptop. And um, and I put uh, I, I put that Coltrane I put on uh, out of this world, yeah. uh, and so I'm I, I got out of this world coming. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the uh, the exhibit, um, and um, I just felt this energy that I usually stay away from when I'm writing. I, I like to I, I like to write at kind of lower emotional altitudes to keep keep a kind of a, a most keep a sobriety going down there in the in, in the trenches. See if I can just push a little bit more insight. Almost the the the. the so the you don't want to get drunk with your poetry then. Uh, it's part say you again. Get drunk with your poetry then, right? You said, right, 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 right. Sometimes, uh, you gotta, sometimes you got to get drunk with that poem, right? You well, know, see, man. There, so then, look what happened. So so <laughs> so then it was too much. There was there was too much uh, energy. Um, Cause actually, I, 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 I the, the the exhibit was out of this world, and I I actually never heard that song before. It was one of those uh, lesser, you know, it's it's a it's a lesser label uh, release. I never heard it before. So between these two things, the 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 energy was too high for me to turn down. Mm-hmm. But I I I, I did this. Uh, I, I kind of applied this 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 little trick, a, a meditate a meditation trick, where instead of um, you know, running with the storylines that accompany an emotion, you drop the storylines and stay with the energy and just keep a kind of a real time uh, account on what you're feeling. And so that's what I started doing. I just started really just kind of exploring the energy and letting kind of more subconscious voices do the work of construction. And this is what, this is what, was spit out. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've been playing. I've been playing with the with the kind of with the Lord riff uh, for 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 a little while. Mm-hmm. Um, it was on, it's almost like my most risky move, or, or you know. And that's what I kind of dig about this this book. Um, I took a lot. I think I took more risk than I've ever taken right. on 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 the page, and um, and mm-hmm. so it's a it's a riskier move, but it just you know. It just, it 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 is just kind of this this conversation um, that I don't know how to frame right. any other, any other way. So it's not quite often that it's like jazz and blues. You know what I'm saying? It comes mm-hmm. out, and um, and there you are. And you turn you if you're turned loose on a blues or a jazz piece, like you don't need anything other than that, right? You know, you say mm-hmm. goodbye to all the other constraints, right? And yes, you zoom man. up there, man. And they and they say that um, you know, I I, I love uh, Ella, you know, and she sings that song. I was that's what I was th- I was going to say to you, right? Uh, if you never heard it, she hear her sing it. And Ella, to me, Ella Fitzgerald is like, is I mean, she has amazing voice. You, you know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. what, but she is planted on this earth. She's earthbound. In the midst of singing all how she sings and all the musical instruments she does with her voice, she's earthbound. But Sarah, you listen to Sarah at 12 o'clock midnight or one o'clock in the morning, and Sarah takes you to outer space, you know. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you don't know how you got there. Your eyes are closed, and all of a sudden, you realize she has taken you to outer space, and you're up there. And then the next thing you figure, can she get me back safely? <laughs> And and they say bloods have not been to outer space, but we have been to outer space for you here indeed. Sarah Vaughn, you know, uh, take you out there and you're going smooth sailing, whatever. And then all of a sudden you say, hey, is it time to go home now? (laughs) And Sarah goes into that deep, deep, deep voice and brings you home safely. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I like that. He's very, very much right. Yeah. That's, you know, you have to do that sometimes, don't you? You know, leave because what you're saying, you left. At least I think what you're saying is that you know you left your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And the great thing about being a poet, you know, you learn 
is that you will leave that comfort zone every time you write sometimes because there would be some lines in there you can't figure out where they came from right but it's like when you were like turning or trying to figure out what to say they crept in <laughs> right yeah yeah thank mm -hmm. you so much for that yeah appreciate thank that. you uh please please uh let's 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 hear it now okay right oh righty 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 um I like to do something since the, the Supreme Court, you know, you know, has has acted, uh, you know, as they used to act before you got someone on there who could control them, you know, some people with some with, with some humanity. Um, this is called Introduction of Toni Morrison and Others on the occasion of the publication of a book, Racing Justice, Engendering Power, Essays on Anita Hill. Clarence Thomas and the construction of social reality. That's a title, ain't it? Right. <laughs> but that's what she called it. Of course, it ain't strange that you're here in my bedroom to accept my nomination of you as Supreme Court Justice. Bob and I both know how important bedrooms and beds and bathrooms are to you people. <laughs> yes, indeedy, by golly, by gee. What you say, Barb, from the outhouse to the White House. Of course, it ain't strange to this journalist that you will not be on the golf course when you ascend to that throne of justice. You and every other Black man know the balls to small. Of course, it ain't strange for the New York Times to delight in your accomplishment of weightlifting. We all know that Black men's bodies are important to them, to women, other men, Bill Donahue, academics, voyeurs, scientists, journalists, Oprah Winfrey, undertakers, prisons, long winding trees. Of course, it ain't strange for this senator to love your life, to regard it as second on my list of the most fundamental points about Clarence Thomas. Yes, indeed, by golly, by gee, your smile, your grin, your loud laugh that comes from deep inside and shakes the body into an American shuffle, stirs the soul, and I rest under this proud tradition of your people. However, it is strange that this dark, vindictive looking woman could come charging into these hearings with her accusations, allegations of sexual harassment, sexual misdoings, sexual intimidation. She is evidently put up to this by those special interest people, or she must be crazy or jealous or deranged or scorned lover or jealous or lesbian or insane or disturbed or a hater of lighter complexion women or jealous. I mean, she wasn't raped or nothing. So what's her problem? Where did this college, law school, educated witch, this ball busting traitor to the race, this dumb black female screwing it up for all black males trying to succeed, get on with this sexual harassment stuff. Where'd she come from anyway? Who's her mama? And it is not strange that Mr. Thomas was not disqualified immediately at the first charges level against him. I mean, we mean, what does she mean by sexual harassment? What does that have to do with work and advancement and compliance with the rules after all? Doesn't she know she's black and female and unmarried and in need of a job protection, advancement, verification? I, we, the men, the country, the world have never heard of a sexually harassed black woman. I don't care how smart she thinks she is. I mean, she's only a black woman. Anyone know who's her mama? Finally, it is not strange that we are here with these exquisite wordsmiths who have forged a place for us to begin to understand the madness of this Western psyche, the madness of men bonding in public against all women. These writers, these men and women have come to dissect, delineate, decry with brilliance the homicidal nature of a country that continues to pit black men and women in arenas of combat so the executioners can clean and private with their own pornographic fantasies of how long and black and how sweetly black it smells. It is not strange that we have men and women of conscience here tonight who in defending and defining black culture defend the country, the world, humanity as well. So we welcome these words, Miss Sister Toni Morrison, my sister, Sisters Paula Giddings, Nell Painter, Gail Pimbleton, Kimberly Crenshaw, Patricia Williams, Gloria Brasky-Lacour, and Juanimia Lubiano, and brother Leon 
Higginbotham Jr., my brother, brothers Cornell West and Andrew Ross, and you, my sisters and brothers, this audience of men, women, students who are here to hear, listen, 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 listen. Mm. That's a poem, a, 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 a book that Sister Tony did uh, about um, what I we call the coronation of that brother in the Supreme Court, you know. And I remember after he was uh, brought on, how people started to cheer. A lot of black people that I remember getting on stage and saying, no, 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 no. This is not the man we wanted here to replace a great man, a great black man who was on this court, you know. And I'll never forget that uh, some people started to boo me and say, oh, you know, you're talking about the black man. I say, yeah, I'm talking about a black man. I'm talking about a man, you should read his record and see. As, as and what was great about everything a year later, you know, people apologized. They apologized because they realized, you know, who he was and he was not the in quotes man who should have been on the Supreme Court. And so here we are already with the Supreme Court again. Um, and women are being, um, I mean, completely, um, uh, uh, sent, as I watch on the news tonight, sent out of their states in order to get an abortion. Isn't that something, right? And told, you know, that you can't get one, you know, and we don't care if you were raped. We don't care if it was your father, your stepfather, your brother, or we don't care who it is, whatever, you know, uh, we are making the laws now. And so we now have, again, you know, coming full circle, you know, men saying simply, we are taking control of these women's bodies. Can you imagine that, my brother? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I go to the railroad tracks and follow them to the station of my enemies. A cobalt tooth man pitches pennies at my mugshot negative all over the United States. There are toddlers in the rock. I see why everyone out here got in the big cosmic basket and why blood agreements mean a lot and why I get shot back at. It. I understand the psycho spiritual refusal to write white history and take the glass freeway. White skin tattooed on my right forearm ricochet sewage near where I collapse into a rat infested manhood. My new existence is living graffiti in the kitchen with a lot of gun cylinders to hack up. House of God in part, no cops in part. My body brings down the crystal. The new bullets pray over blankets made from the old bullets. Pray over the 28th hour's next beauty mark. Extrajudicial Confederate statue restoration. The waistband before the next protest post. Hey, by the way, time is not an illusion, your honor. I will save your desk for last. You are witty, your honor. You're moving money again, your honor. It is only raining one thing, non-white cops. And prison guard shadows reminded me of spoiled milk floating on an oil spill in neighborhood making a lot of fuss over its demise in New Lake for a Black Panther party. Malcolm X's ballroom jacket slung over my son's shoulder, the figment of village, a new news to a new white preacher, all in an abstract painting of a president. A boss slavery some time, didn't it? The tantrum screeches of military boss in election Tuesday cars, a cold blooded study in leg irons, proof that some white people have actually filed a nooses. That sundown couples made their vows of love over opaque peach plastic and bolt action audiences. The Medgrave II second is definitely my favorite law of science. Final news clippings and primitive methodists, my arm changes imperialism. Simple policing versus structural frenzy. Elementary school script versus even wider white spectrums. Artless bleeding in the challenge of watching civilians think of terrible rituals they have around the corner. They let their elders beg for public mercy. I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen these kids' heads in the arrows myself and see how much gravy spills out of family crest. Modern fans of war, well, well, with their t-shirt poems and t-shirt gill and me having on the cheapest pair of shoes on the bus. I have no choice but to read the city walls for signs of my life. You know, all street life to a certain extent starts fear. Sometimes with a spiritual memory even. pre dawn soul clap, your father dying even. Maybe I've pushed the city too far. My sensitivities in landfill districting and minstrel whistles, white supremacist graffiti on westbound rail guards all overcoming, reauthored, reauthored by revolutionary violence that chose its own protagonist or muted stage of genius. The garbage is growing voices, condensed Marxism for warrior depressives, underpasses in their pockets because they just might be deities or decent bid on the Panther name, a merciful Marxism, disquieted home life, a metaphor for relaxing next to a person who was relaxing next to a gun. 
I stared at my father for a few seconds, then returned to my upbringing, returned to the souls of Ohio black folk. Revolution down there pagan at this point. You know what the clown wants? The respect of the ant. Wants to interpret pain only. Wants to pull a 38 out of a begging bowl. Wants me to hurt my hand on this pen. I'm not tired of these rooms. Just tired of the world to give them a relativity. My only change of clothes prosecuted. The government has finally learned how to write poems. Shootouts that briefly align. That make up a parable. Or parables like white bodies are paid well. Or do white men even have leaders? Are all white people white men? A rap pitches a river. Can almost taste the racial divide can almost roll a family member's head into a city hall legislative chamber knows who in this good book will fly all i do is practice lord decided not to talk out of anger ever again and my wife at the same time i met new audience members for our pain we pass each other cigarettes and watch cops win a city going uniquely linear harlem of the west do a true universe i'll always remember you in fancy clothes my wife said so here i sit twisting in silk ideation Rifle made of post bellum tar targets made of an honest language. This San Francisco poetry is how God knows it is me whining. Riding among the lesser respected wolves, lesser observed militarization, Dixie List prison bookkeeping. I mean, the California Great Coast are coming. This mob gossip and bourgeois debt collection. I mean, it's tempting to change professions mid poem in a Chicago briefing. A white sergeant saying, Blank slate for all of us after this black organizer is dead. Standard academics toasting two buck wine at the tank parade. Bay of nothing, Lord. Just nuclear cobblestones, gun line, athleticism, and the last of the inherited asthma. Children giving white dolls to play with and fear, facial expression borrowed from rich people's shoestrings. I can hear hate and teach hate and call tools by people names and name people dead to themselves. No one getting naturalized except fair legends soon, carving the equator in the throat soon. Sorry to make you relive all this, Lord, all this pre dime monarchy friends putting up politician posters and snorting the remainder of the paste, menstrual scripts shoveled into the walls by the elders, my children sharpening quarters on the city is for these audiences i might project myself into a ghost-like state for these gangsters i might do the same every now and then take a nervous look east sleep becomes christ sleep starts growing a racial identity do you ever spiral lord has the gang gangs be traitors be patient with my poems lord so much pain is a point to crime i mean it has to be if race traitors come with it lord is that my revolver in your hand you know better presidents than these have yawned at cages have called us holy slaves filled the school libraries with cop documentaries baby i don't have money for food well, I have, I have no present moment at all. <laughs> ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. What year was that written? Uh, that, that that's another that, that that was another recent, maybe in the last year year or two. Mm -hmm. uh, Are you? I'm always the professor, so you if, you know for conversation. So do you see um, um, uh, a slight? shifting from the first book that you did into this book yeah yeah yes for sure uh, uh for sure mm -hmm. um the the um and actually they're, they're almost uh, uh born of a an absence of destination uh -huh. um, what do you and, mean and meaning i didn't know what 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 planet i was heading to um style wise mm -hmm. um you know, location, content, theme. I felt kind of after the the the, the book before. I, I felt kind of, I felt a gap. Right. Um. And 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 I and I was trying to actually. I, I think I was trying to resolve it, uh, uh incorrectly, mm -hmm. and, with some kind of chefing. You know, like, well, you know, add a little bit more of this or take away some of that. Uh, when it when it was this kind of this 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 dance with energy while writing uh, that would that would that that would kind of lead me into um, lead, lead me into this this in, into this book. So the, the the trippy biography of the book is more one of just kind of general approach to writing uh, more more than uh, here is here is the um, here's the new here's the new plan. But I, 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 I'm just, I'm just, I just take it one line at a time, one poem at a time. Just trying to, just trying to push, uh, push myself, uh, push my capacity for language as, as as far as I can, and make sure that the craft it, uh, belongs, um, you know, really belongs to a humanism that is to say, it belongs to a, um, you know, a, a revolutionary trajectory. You know, um, trying to. Uh, uh, poems that 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 are, are worth um, worth everyone's um, everyone's journey, but I, I usually can't. I just I see like right here. Where's this next line at? <laughs> and I don't even try to look over. It. I'm right. just trying to work 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 within there. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm.
What what um I feel I feel like some people might have some questions for you that 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 I I I don't want to take away away their opportunity um to ask um okay. is, is this, is, are there some questions for uh, Sister Sonia? First of all, thank you both for that whole exchange and both of you reading. I know myself and all the audience here could just listen to you two talk to each other for hours. Um, and we do have lots of questions coming in from the audience. So apologies in advance that we will not be able to get to all of them, but we're gonna get to a few. So we do have a question that is for you, um, Sonia, that's about your writing process and how it's changed over time. Um, can you speak to what the process is and what it's looked like throughout your career? Well, I don't think that it's in quotes uh, necessarily a process. Uh, is it male or female who asked this question? Um, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, is there a name? No, we don't give names? Okay. Well, I, I was gonna say sister or brother, you know, I didn't know. Um, uh, but it's not necessarily a process, but you know, what happened, what I was, what I was going to do is, is to dip in each period, you know, the 1960s, the 1970s, the 1980s, the 1990s, and 2000, like coming up all of a sudden, so people could see the motion and movement uh, that happened. Um, you know, when we discovered, you know, and for many of you, you are so blessed that uh, you didn't have to discover that you were black, you know, by the time you got on this planet, people had said, oh, you know, you is black, you know, uh, uh, and here you are. And we weren't told we were black, you know, uh, or we were told that we were Negroes, right? But it was never discussed Negrodom, if you understand what I'm saying. And so therefore, uh, I, I, I showed up at the Schomburg when I had graduated from Hunter College uh, and I was, uh, <clears throat> had just turned 20 and uh, I went in and, and met a woman um, uh, there at the Schomburg and, um, and I began to read uh, uh, black literature. Uh, she brought me, Miss Hudson brought me um, um, Up From Slavery, Souls of Black Folk and Their Eyes Are Watching God, right? And she had Their Eyes Are Watching God on top and I started to read. And I read maybe about a fourth of the book and I, you know, I had, I had been squeezed in with all these men uh, who would, had books stacked high, who were there doing research and I eased out and I knocked on the door, the glass door. And I said to, to, to her, I said, how can I be an educated woman and not have read this book? She said, oh my dear, my dear, what's your name again, Sonia? Uh, go sit down, I'm gonna give you lots and lots of books. And she did. And I discovered that through these writings that I was, you know, uh, this Negro with a capital N at the time, right? Um, and that we had a Hurston history. And I had been through high school, junior high um, and, and college and never found me, never saw me in any place. Isn't that amazing, whatever. And so it wasn't, it wasn't by chance that we came out halfway crazy then, if you understand that. And so the joy with the Schomburg is that you got back on that on that route, you know, you got back on that train, you got back on uh, the way that says simply, hey, look here, um, you know, you have a history and a history of these people who've gone before, you know, and they fought and done things. And, you know, indeed, you know, you are this black woman and it saved my life. It saved me from being a fool. It saved me for getting on stage and acting like a fool, if you understand what I'm saying. It saved me from like at some point denying who I was and who I am. Um, uh, I am forever grateful to the Schomburg and Miss Hudson and all the people there, but I'm more grateful that she took a time of almost a whole year to feed me book after book after book at the Schomburg and all of a sudden I was healed. It is something to be healed. It is something to look in a mirror and love your face. It is something to love not only your face, but other faces that look like you. It is something to walk in New York and walk down and say, hi, how you doing, brother? <laughs> you know, and you laugh and people look at you and think you were crazy. And you say, yeah, I'm crazy, but I'm crazy with some new ideas and it's a good crazy. So yeah, uh, this is nothing that, that, that came all of a sudden. Uh, it was something that uh, lucky enough I had uh, someone who taught me. And I remember when Miss Hudson was, was dying and I went to see her, I used to go see her. She lived near my, my father. And I, I leaned towards her and I said, Miss Hudson, can you tell me what did you see in my face 
that made you take the time with me to send me to Mr. Bashow's bookstore at 125th Street, right? You know, and Mr. Moore's bookstore, Caribbean Literature. I said, and she looked at me with those eyes and she was a little bit drawn. And she said, oh, my dear Sonia, we know, we can see it in your eyes. Yeah. And so my life has been to make sure that I give a similar thing to not only Blacks and Browns, right? But also to whites so they can understand where they are in this mix called America, if you understand again, again what I'm saying, that you go and you teach in a university and you teach all kinds of people walking in and they leave your class looking not only at you, but looking at themselves also too, knowing that you know the, the, the task of all of us is to walk upright as a human being finally on this earth. You see, you know, not as a superior, you know, not just to go out and make lots of money, uh, but to understand the way we participated in the classroom, how we looked at each other's humanity, how we we touch each other's humanity, why we grab each other's hands, you know, you know, and said things together, uh, and said simply that this is our country, this is our world. We're going to make it a different place from the uh, the people who've come before us. You see. And we know it's going to be hard work. We know there might be failure, but we know we're going to have successes also too. And so we moved out of there and I joined New York Four. I was involved with people changing the world, you know, changing New York City, changing America, changing the world. And it is something that has been so important to me. So yeah, you know, so my poetry changed, you know, you know, I didn't have to say I am a black woman again, you know, uh, because I got on stage, you know, although I got on stage one of the first times that I'm a black woman in New York City and some people, boo, you know, I'm a Negro, sister, I'm a Negro. I said, uh-huh, you stay a Negro. I'm a black woman, <laughs> right? You know, that kind of back and forth. And, you know, it's been just simply wonderful, you know, to know that. And that you young people coming behind us don't have to go through that, that you see it, you taste it, so you can take the poetry on, you know, to another, another level, you see, you can talk about what's going on. And we do the same kind of poetry. We do it, you know, maybe quite differently sometimes, you know, but the point is that it is that one walk, that one aim, you know, towards, you know, uh, freedom, you know, towards justice, you see, um, you know, for all of us here in the place called America. Asked her, did I answer her question? I hope I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was wonderful. Thank you so much for that answer. And I have another question that I'll direct to both of you. Um, someone asked, what is the poet laureate's role in civic society? What does, it, what does being a public poet bring, bring us in such troubled times? Mm -hmm. You wanna go first, my brother? No, uh, please. Yeah, yes, since I was just, yeah. Oh, I got you. What? what? Oh, you can go. Oh, I forgot. I, I no, please go ahead. Please, please. Well, I was a what? I was the poet laureate of Philadelphia, and the mayor said that um, uh, that he appointed me the poet. They appointed me the poet laureate because I was the conscience of the city. Well, let me tell you, you know, something being the conscience of a city because people will love you and hate you at the same time, you know, and, and like, here she comes again. What is she going to say now? Whatever, et cetera. But what I did is I looked at the city and there were two things I wanted to do. I wanted to talk about peace. And so I wanted to teach uh, the people who came my way how to write the haku because the haku is a peace. It's a peace. It's about peace. The subtext is always about peace. But I want to have a peace mural also in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, and so we joined with some of the organizations there, the mural arts there. And I said that I presented that to them. And then I got on the telephone and I called people. I called uh, Maya Angelo. I called Alice Walker. I called, um, 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 oh, come on, Sonia, uh, Tony Morrison. I called, uh, um, uh, Sweet Honey in the Rock, um, Sister Bernice Reagan. Uh, I was uh, had gone to Chicago and I had, I had met, uh, I had, uh, was uh, seeing uh, open a show with, with the rapper, um, oh gosh, uh, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, he 
he's the one who's saying, uh, he sings a lot now on, on, on the idiot box on television, right? Uh, and he and the brother did a, a famous song about, um, um, you know, that brother, that rapper, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name, right? Um, but they, they joined together, uh, the brother who plays the piano, you know, and, and they wrote a song about- um, um, Common. Common, brother Common. Oh, forgive me, Common. Right, you know, and I got them to write. I remember when I called Sister Ma, she said, I don't write hot cool, Sonia. I said, please write one for a peace mural, right? And I called Sister Tony and she said, what? You know, oh, I don't write haku, Sonia. I said, please write a haku. You know, and they wrote haku. And you come to Philadelphia, you will see a beautiful peace mural with all the words of these of these of these of these brothers and these sisters, right? You know, talk, talking about peace in three lines, whatever, et cetera. Uh, so I did that. The other thing that I did that that uh, people kept saying there's no money uh, around the museums there. Uh, their benches and they're really crappy looking. I wanted to bring a crew to paint um, the benches, and I asked each one of the people. I said, "Can I can I take your poems off the mural and put it on benches? So therefore, when people come into our city, they are turning around and see that they're sitting on and they see peace things around the city, right? Uh, but we did put peace um, with with students around the city on the sidewalks uh, and on the buses. You know, the peace haku." Um, you know, so I did that. If you visit one of the churches uh, in Chestnut Hill, you will come into the church and there's this beautiful tile, um, a marble rather from Italy. And I was delivering a talk in there. Afterwards, they start banging and tearing up the floor. And I said to them, uh, what are you doing? They said, oh, we, we brought some marble from Italy. And I said, without missing a beat, why don't you put peace haku on it? And they did. You, so you come to this church and there, because it, you know it is always uh, about peace. If you understand truly what I'm saying, you know, you know, talking about peace, making peace, whatever, uh, exploring peace, uh, um, you know, making children learn um, uh, about peace, uh, uh, getting a student sitting in front of a student, right? What the way I began to teach it, you know, and I said, okay, I'm going to put my hand on your heart, you put your head on my heart and then I cover your heart. And then I said, stop all the noise children because I'm in now in elementary school. I said, what do you hear? And you know, they look up, they begin to look at their partner. They hear the heartbeat. Once you hear a human being's heartbeat, you can't kill them. You really can't. And you stop talking about them too. I know that sounds, you think it's you know, high, you know, plateau kind of thing, but it's not. You know, when you teach children, you know, that that person you've been mocking and has been a part, you hear a heartbeat, you stop doing that. I've seen that in the classroom. Uh, I've seen it happen with the very young, but I've seen it happen with adults also too, uh, along the way. So those are the things. And then we did a book uh, uh, and we asked for haku from all over the world. And the book has haku from every continent, every continent, people sit in haku. Peace haku, and I and I tie, I called it pieces of haku song, um, and 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 we brought it out and sent it out to people and children, you know, around the country and around the world. Uh, so I think that you know you have to decide, you know, what it is that you're going to do. And of course, I invited people in, uh, you know, to do uh, panel discussions, you know. And so I invited uh, uh, Sister Tony Morrison and 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 the first port. Uh, Port Laureate of America. Uh, uh, um, I'm having a, a, a meltdown. The first Port Laureate of America. Um, uh, she comes from Virginia, right? You know, and she wrote about her about her her aunt and uncle in a classic a classic um, uh, book that she got a Pulitzer Prize for. <laughs> I've given you all the information. Read a duh. Rita Dove's, I see, give information, you'll come up with it, right. Uh, Rita Dove and, 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 and Sister Tony and myself, we had a conversation for a bunch of people, they were sitting all over the place, right. And what I wanted to do, what I think we always strive to do, that's why this conversation, my dear brother, is that not only would we read a little bit, you know, whatever, but we would talk because we, I wanted people to see, we the writers, how human we are. So therefore the country can't do damage to us. That's important. Right, you know, so they look at you and say, you can't hurt 
uh, 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 that sister or that brother because, you know, I heard him on stage and they were talking about this and that. Not remembering the poem necessarily, okay. The poetry was in the conversation. The poetry was in them telling them about how they grew up, about their lives, you know, Sister Rita, Sister Tony, whatever. And then I brought in another time, Sister Angela, um, um, and, and, and a sister from the Midwest, um, uh, a Latino, a Latina sister, you know, sister Angela Davis and myself, and we talked politics also too, you know, and we let them, and they read, you know, from their works also too, um, you know, this is the kind of thing you do. Uh, I said, you know, uh, you were not, we would not be put in a place where people will forget who we are. They will always remember what we say. They might not remember the poem, but they remember how we made them feel, whatever, and we made them feel as they stood up and stamped it stamp the floor and clap their hands that they too were indeed human beings here, sometimes in this inhumane planet, this inhumane country, this inhumane world. Right. Yeah. I would I would, I wouldn't put too much more on top of that, you know, um to, just to um just to add a little to the to the um to the you know to to the, uh, I don't know what the noun of implore is, uh -huh. uh, but to implore everyone to make sure that um, that your praxis is not operating just in your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. know, and that po poets, you know, mm -hmm. need to, um, you know, just completely synthesize your craft um, mm -hmm. with the mass imagination as mm -hmm. it's actually playing out. Mm -hmm. And you know, in, in 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 San Francisco right now, we have a lot of people uh, operating in different realities, and unfortunately, the way that most of us are related to these realities is benefiting mm -hmm. a ruling class that mm -hmm. that, that is not uh, that can never have interest uh, or, or only have interest in contradiction the are so you know just. Uh, Come, 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 come on down or come on in, whatever the direction <laughs> is. <laughs> Make sure. It's that little open sure door and say, come on in, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's the only way, you know, my brother and, and, and my sisters and brothers in the audience, you know, um, you know, we've got to, you know, uh, my generation, you know, I was saying to someone in an interview earlier today, you know, People kept saying, why, why do you all keep bringing up this stuff all the time, right? You know, we had to bring it up so people could see who they were. Because we faced a generation of people who didn't like themselves and didn't love themselves. Isn't that something? You know, and the older people didn't like themselves, you know, who kept saying, why do you keep talking about that black stuff? You know, uh, you know, you know, we're really Negroes, you know. Even some people went so far as said they were Afro-Americans, you know. It wasn't Afro-Americans, yeah, Afro-Americans, but, but, you know, not black. As someone said, who would want to be black, you know, at all? Uh, but the point is simply, my dear sister and my dear brother, there were times that, you know, we, you know, we got on stages, you know, you know, and we took abuse, you know, and we stood tall. And I stood tall because I remember my, my grandmother, who's the head deaconess in the church in Alabama, you know. So if someone really thought, you know, like, ooh, what they're talking about, ooh, whatever, said, oh, you stood tall and strong. And you kept, you kept on responding to it until they shut up, you know, until they shut up. And then the, the crowd would say, yeah, yeah, now you all talk, you all talk, you know. Um, but there were times, my brothers and my sisters, at some point, that you come home and cry. Because you said, God, you know, all I really want to do is just write some poetry. <laughs> Can you imagine saying that? Just want to write some poetry, right? And, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and, and quite often, you know, I, I want this poetry to make people feel good, but I want people to show people the road they got to go down sometimes, you know, and sometimes these people don't want to go down that road with you at all initially. And the joy about holding on and learning and reading and studying at some point, you know, that you knew and you know that indeed that, that the road was getting full of people, you know, coming, walking next to you. And I learned that when I, when I just came out to San Francisco 
to, uh, to begin, help begin Black studies, right? Um, and I was teaching a class called Black Lit and, and, and Poetry. And it was a, a day that I was home and, and, my, and, and my landlord knocked on the door, you know, and he said, Professor Sanchez, uh, there are two gentlemen who want to see you. And my landlord was a Japanese American, who's a great landlord. And, you know, he had just given me a Samoyed, you know, I come from New York City, never had a dog, you know, never could afford a dog at all, right? And there we were. And these guys came in and this guy went in his pocket and said, FBI, you know, and I said, uh-huh. And he said, you're teaching Dubois, Wright, Garvey, Lank Hughes, somebody else in there. And I was so naive and young. I said, yes, they're part of black literature. You can't do black literature without them. And the guy went, what? He turned to my landlord and said, put her out. She's one of those militants on campus. Put her out of this house. She doesn't deserve to have a, a nice house like this. And I am standing there looking at this. You know, when you're in a foreign country and you don't speak the same language and you start speaking slowly, you think if you speak this English slowly enough, he or she will understand. So I said, I turned to this FBI dude and said, yes, I teach black literature. <laughs> I teach Du Bois, you know, Garvey, and I named all the names, right? You know, because there would be no black literature without them. And the guy looked at me like I was crazy. Like what is wrong with this woman, whatever. My landlord left, he said, well, goodbye, I'm leaving, whatever. And there we were, you know, face to face with each other, uh, in my face, whatever. What I should never forget is that he screamed again. The other FBI man stood still as bank water, did not move did not look to the right or the left, look straight ahead, right? And all of a sudden I heard these big feet coming down the hallway and I turned around to a dog that I had never petted, to a dog I only fed and walked, to a dog that was gonna be returned to the landlord in two weeks. He told me to keep the dog for two weeks. And he came and sat down next to me and looked up like this. And I said, no. And the guy came at me again and snow leaped for him. And he said, he said, lady, Get your dog. And I said, stop. He sat back down. He never took his eyes off that man. And for the first time, I turned and put my hand on his head <laughs> and said, nice, nice doggy. And then I said to them, I guess it's over with. They said, we'll get you. And they, I opened the door and they left. It was then that I understood basically what we had begun to do the insurrections that we were beginning to deal with, you know, uh, the people that we would meet, the people that we would teach, if you understand truly. But I got on the telephone, I, I, it snow followed me down to my study and I got on the telephone and I dialed Miss Hudson's number to Schomburg and she came on the phone and I, and I started to cry. I said, Miss Hudson, the FBI just came to my house, two of them. I said, one just stood still like death. You know, the other one, you know, just put his head up in my face and screamed at me and whatever, whatever. And I said, what is that? I'm just teaching black literature, right? What you taught me, the books that you gave me. And she said, oh my dear, she said, I thought you knew that if you taught some of these people, you might get into a little trouble. <laughs> trouble wasn't it, you know. But what I got into was a battle for minds, you know, uh, was teaching. Uh, what I got into was organizations that I was involved with, you know, um, you know, what we did is we went into the streets of America, you know, in, in Oakland, uh, Baraka, Bullens and I, we were taking, taking the ADA, you know, uh, as a prop to the, to the, to the streets uh, of Oakland. And we <laughs> arrived at nine o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. And we had people with drums and we started performing, whatever. And people came out and said, what you doing? We said, we're doing theater, black theater for you. They said, can you come back around 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock? It's too early for that, right? And we learned that you don't do black theater on a Sunday at nine or eight o'clock in the morning, you know? And we came back at 12 o'clock, you know, and they listened. All I'm saying at some particular point, uh, am I talking too much, my, my brother? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, um, 
that when I see you and hear your poetry, when I look at all the young poets, you know, here, you know, and 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 the brothers like Dwayne, you know, uh, uh, Bats, you know, who's, who writes, you know, and he writes about his experience in prison, you know, and what he's doing now in the prisons at this point, you know, when I also look at indeed Rachel Harding, the daughter of, of, of Vincent Harding, you know, when I look at there, when I look at, you know, all of these books here, uh, Sister Stacy Chen, you know, um, uh, Mahogany Brown, you know, Walter Mosley, all of these people, when I look at you, you know, I will go home, I will go upstairs tonight and I will, you know, really get on my knees and, and say thank you. Thank you for continuing the tradition that we continued when we had a sturdy Brown before us, you know, who would listen to us read, you know, when there was a Margaret Walker and a Gwendolyn Brooks before us and all these people who came before us, whatever, you know, and they listened to us, you know, and gave us guidance, whatever, you know, and they kept saying, you're writing a little bit differently from us at this point, you know, but see, that wasn't the point we were writing. And we had the same message, if you understand truly what I'm saying. But that's the point, the same message, liberation, the same message, freedom, the same message, if you understand truly what I'm saying, that we got to have be in this country and have a country that will respond to all the people here, whatever. We've got to make sure that people have decent salaries, we've got to have make sure that women have the right to for abortion. So we got to do that work again. You know, but we do it again and make sure this time around that it sticks, that it stays, right? Yeah. So thank you, my dear brother, you know, for this, right? Mm -hmm. um, thank you. I, I mean, uh, th thank you, Leslie, uh, on, on behalf of everybody here. I know um, our, our, our appreciation of you um, knows, no, no, knows no bound and no religion, <laughs> you know? Um, what what you um, the 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 path that you instruct us from is uh, is is like no other, and um, you know just just so much appreciation for the for the for the for the love and the hope and the peace that that you brought us here uh, tonight. I, I really I, there's, there's really nothing else to. You have my number, so if you ever <laughs> go around saying, "Oh, I don't know about this," call me. You know, I, I, I've lost a lot of people that I used to call at three o'clock in the morning and say, you, you up as I am now, Sonia. I said, I just finished this poem. <laughs> you know? And I was like, they said, what? You know what time it is? I said, yeah, but you have to wake me at four o'clock in the morning and I've listened to your poem. You're going to listen to this poem. <laughs> said, let me get a cigarette or just minute, let me, I said, I don't care what you get, but I'm waiting. I miss that. You know, I've got, I'm going to probably call on some of you young people you know, because I miss finishing a piece at four o'clock in the morning and not having a place to share it. You know what I mean? Whatever. And I would call uh, uh, some of the brothers and the sisters, right? And they would they would listen to it and they would laugh and say, uh huh, and 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 make a comment, whatever, et cetera, You know. And then we talk <laughs> until the sun came up, whatever. Um, I I I am. Uh, whew, whew. We got you. We yeah. got you. We so got you. Oh, you're three o'clock in the morning. Don't you get mad, okay? <laughs> oh, no, no, I got you. <laughs> I got you, especially. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank right you. Right on. Well, I want to say thank you to both of you for this incredible last hour. I know my heart and my soul are so filled uh, just by the wisdom, by the conversation, by the creation uh, that both of you are bringing to all of us. And I wanna thank everyone for being here, for sharing this space with us. There are millions of comments and affirmations to both of you. Um, I wanna remind everyone to please get your copies of Blood on the Fog, as well as Collected Poems. Um, both incredible books and support our poets, um, support this community, this creative community. Um, and I wanna close by just saying again, thank you to you both. Thank you to our audience. Please continue to support uh, this community, uh, please continue to support MOAD. Uh, if you are able to support the museum financially, we do appreciate that. Um, and following this, pro this program, we would love to hear your feedback. So we'll be sharing information about the program survey in the chat. 
Um, and with that, I wish you all a wonderful and safe rest of your evening and to continue in this, in this spirit uh, that we've created here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. If, if, if this thing gets this, whatever we, we're trying to experience here, we all got to get together up close, you know, and see each other, right? So um, hopefully everyone will get that shot and we'll be able to really travel and, and to, to come out this way and, and do some gigs with you, okay? Right, you know? Right. Uh, I mean, I like, I used to do uh, that on stage with, with, with people and we'd be on stage at the same time, right? And you would read something, right? You know, and you know, we would fall down on the stage laughing, whatever, and then get up and then start reading again. <laughs> and, and, you know, I miss that a great deal now, you know? So, you know, it'll happen again. So, so when I come out this way, be prepared, okay? <laughs> right. And thank you, my dear brother, for, for your poetry, for your genius, you know, and thank you for continuing this great tradition that, that has been out there for so long, you know, poetry that is radical and poetry that loves at the same time because they're one and the same. Mm -hmm. Much love. Much love to you too. Mm -hmm. Bye, my dear sister. <laughs> is she there? Yeah, yeah, okay. These are reading glasses, so they're not for <laughs> you, you know, right. Yeah. Take good care of yourselves and please stay safe, okay? Yeah. yeah. Well, All right. Take care, everyone. Right, thank, thank you again. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>